they're not they're not in kilts. No, they're <laughs> men in kilts with chest hair. I'm gonna do Google men in. No, please don't. <laughs> no, no, good. We'll lose you completely. You'll be like men in kills with Jack. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. You're not gonna. That's. This is what happens. This it's a little is what... bit exciting. Yeah. Please don't. This is dystopia tonight. Tonight. Yeah. Hey. How are you? That introduction is so sweet. I'm doing well. Awesome. This is your first time on a podcast, you said, right? I didn't even know that until you shared your story. Yeah. I mean, who else would want me to come on? <laughs> that's so. That's very I, modest. I had just started with the band, and you jumped on it, oh. the DMs, like you should come on my podcast, which was great. But I have like. There was no reason for me to be on anyone's podcast until I joined this band. Wow. And when I think you... my first reply to you is, uh, I don't really know what I would talk about. I don't feel like I have anything to say. <laughs> yeah, you leave that to us. We'll figure We'll figure out what you have to say. Yeah, um, I'm sure. <laughs> I, I feel like for the most part, a lot of people feel kind of like that in general. Like even, even people who've like, you know, just been doing this and touring for fucking mm -hmm. ever or years, or even if they had like a hit at some point, like they're like, really? Why do you want to? I don't know why. I'm like, what do you mean? Why? Like, you know, you have an amazing talent. I mean, maybe the thing that I can provide is that I'm so fresh into the touring and the performing and being a part of a band that I guess that could be an interesting perspective because probably a lot of people that you've had, as you said, have been doing this for a while and right. just um, spring chicken, as they say. Were, did you, I mean, you you knew of Gaelic Storm before you, you uh, got approached by them, right? Or no? I only knew the name Gaelic oh, okay. I had this like when I got the call from their manager hey I'm the manager of Gaelic Storm we're a band blah 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 we're interested in you you know we're finding a new fiddler I was like on the phone and I was like yeah Gaelic Storm I know it's a Celtic rock band but mm -hmm. what's so funny and the guys know this story um what's so funny is that I thought I don't know which band I was thinking of because I've yet to kind of find a photo of the band that I was picturing. Maybe this band doesn't exist, but I was picturing like <laughs> tall men with long hair and wearing like white shirts on buttons. You see some nice chest hair in kilts and like lace up utility boots playing the bagpipes. I thought that was Gaelic. <laughs> I'm not doing that That's so oddly specific for like a, for like I an, I, you know, had like a kind of a, super masculine uh piping band rock wow. kind of band like yeah. hair, chest hair i don't know why but they're definitely not that so when i googled them I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> they're really not anything close to that and then i heard of this band called celtic thunder i was like oh i'm sure celtic thunder is what gaelic storm celtic mm. thunder it's really similar i looked that up and there's a bunch of like i want to say petite scrawny men in like suits i think they were mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, now on the internet that i call them scrawny so i i'm just <laughs> <laughs> I think it'll be a matter of minutes before i say something that's probably also i thought okay so i forgot about this podcast in this morning <laughs> thank you <laughs> cheers yeah really yeah me open up <laughs> right away so um I was drinking my coffee and I was shopping online for new stage outfits. Mm -hmm. And I got the notification that I was mentioned on Instagram. So I looked and it was like, tonight, live. And I was like, <laughs> what? Live? <laughs> I thought you pre record and edit no. half of the things I said. So here we go. <laughs> yeah, this is great. So, wait, are you still in search for that mythical, hairy chested, big, broguish band? Like, yeah. Like John's about to stand time? up with a kilt on. I know, I know. Get I'm ready, get ready. Sure Just rip this shirt exist, off. But I think that there's a market for that. I, they're definitely, obviously you've tapped into some kind of yeah. subconscious fantasy that you've had 
<laughs> no, the so I was like, I will not join that. If it was a fantasy, I'd be like, I'll be right there. <laughs> but no, I was thinking, Caleb Storm, no, I don't think I'll be, be doing anything like that. And then when I looked them up, I it was just this whole thing of like looking them on Spotify and Google yeah. and just being like, oh, 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 yeah. okay, whoa, like this is actually a big deal and this is actually pretty cool. And yeah. Um, and then as I've been on the road with them, I've put together more pieces of kind of how important they've been to like the American Irish music scene. Yeah. Putting together some of the songs that I've heard year after year around um, St. Patrick's Day and realizing that I thought that was just like a traditional old Irish pub song. And some of the songs I'm like, oh, they wrote that. And it's just yeah. been around 24 years, something like that. So it's been pretty cool. And also, I mean, when I'm touring and I'm meeting the fans and I'm seeing the crowds that are coming, I'm like, wow, I really just got plugged into something that is an institution at this point. And that's really cool. It's just yeah. I'm really lucky to be in this band at this point. And a really good save from they're not the men you expected them to be. So yeah. that was beautiful. That was a nice, you're like, and I'm truly honored. <laughs> <laughs> no, I knew they were, but now I do. And yeah. no, no. I was going to say, have you been with them for a St. Patty's Day yet? No. I actually, I'm sure we have our St. Patrick's Day gig booked. I just haven't looked and I, I might not be able to say yet because sometimes there's this thing where like you can't announce until, mm. so I won't even look while I'm um, with you guys. But I do know that that's like a party night. Yeah. Yeah, I think. I mean, <laughs> really, like, I hadn't heard. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah, but like, maybe you wouldn't go so much to like a concert and get like super drunk and go crazy. But Gaelic Storm shows are just all about fun. Yeah. Like it's just so, Patrick Murphy who does most of the talking and most of the singing. And he has such a gift for, well, he's a comedian as well. I mean, he doesn't label himself as one, but he's, he has that gift of being and being funny. And so he's so, so good at, he has the audience like in the palm of his hand mm -hmm. and he can also I mean, everything's like some things he kind of says every night and other things just happen and yeah. he has such control of every moment even when not no one knows what's going right. on so i'm entertained on stage i'm i'm still laughing at the same jokes even though they're said every night but like i'm only three months in and so i still am genuinely laughing most of the time with with these jokes you, you'd be great as a comedian's friend because I could use people that come and laugh at the same shit. I mean, I, I, I mix it up a lot, but it'd be nice. <laughs> I could just, you could hire me to sit in the front. The front just, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Applaud, give everybody applause. Um, he, he is fucking hilarious, though. I've seen their show a couple times live, and it is, it's a lot. I mean, even if you even if you have seen it before, it doesn't matter because he the, just the way he presents himself and you know uh, the way he interacts with the crowd, it's just like new over and over again. He's got he's just it has a it's like magic, you know what I mean? Like yes, you yes. know you you know you know you might know what's coming up, but uh, it's still really really fun to watch everybody else kind of interact. And, and it's also still funny when he says it because there's something special about like the Irish accent and maybe the inflection of how they say a sentence. Yes. It's like even as you said, like you might know that joke because you've been three times yeah. to his shows, and it's just like oh, it's still funny. Yeah, it's a, it's fucking annoying how nice the Irish accent. It, like it, like <laughs> it's literally one of my favorite accents of all time. And then it's just like, you know, it, it doesn't matter, man. You hear it, and you're like, can you just not stop talking? <laughs> can you like it's it's just really it's one of those accents that's like pitch perfect there's a lot of accents that are garbage but we won't talk about them here oh. um <laughs> i was gonna say name them name them oh man i mean we haven't had i, I will i don't want to get hurt well now she's not saying it. i feel like there, there's not a lot of german accents i i hear and i'm like that's pretty sweet. Yeah, yeah yeah exactly i'm like are you mad at me that's what i feel like whenever i hear a german accent i'm like are you angry with me right now like you said hello and i'm terrified um <laughs> And I'm not even Jewish. Uh, it's it's. Oh, no. I'll cut. I'll cut that. Don't worry about it. Uh, <laughs> no, it's it disappears. Can you cut stuff I say or not? Yes. yes. Yeah, I can cut it. Yeah, of course. The people who are watching us now, though, they'll they'll always know. They'll yeah. live with this horror forever. <laughs> um, but uh, John, have you been to Ireland? I've never been to Ireland. No, did you just do a little accent? That's nice. Um, no, I've never been to Ireland, but I really, really want to go. Like, I, I absolutely want to go. It bugs yeah. me that I haven't been yet. 
it's it's really beautiful and the people are really nice it's one of those things that like when i went for the first time when i was 16 everyone was telling me everyone's so nice and i was kind of like okay i get it <laughs> then when you get there i was like wow everyone yeah. it, but it's a slower way of living they're not like doing things it's really cool to go to other countries because you see like everyone doesn't do things the way America does things. Right. One of the things that I noticed right away is whenever my friends were driving, it's like they don't care about a GPS. As, as, <laughs> I mean, maybe now people are doing that, but my experience was kind of just leave the house to get to the pub or whatever when you want to, even though you know the music is starting at this point, there really wasn't much of a rush. Everything was kind of like, you just kind of go at your own speed. And then sometimes they'd be like, I know it's over here and I'm just going to kind of look at the signs and kind of keep going the way I think I'm going and then wow. stop and ask someone on the road if I don't know where to go. And I had a GPS. I was like, I could just put it in. And they were like, no, don't bother. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, I'll just go with the flow. And there's all the roundabouts that kind of tell you if you're going towards this area, just keep going this way. And obviously it's a smaller country and less roads. So you do get there quicker. Wow. Um and then people will just like stop and talk to someone in the street and the people, cars behind sit there. I've done that. Before. I've like been in the car before where someone's having a chat in front of them and you don't honk at them. You just kind of like let them Wait. Have a chat. I would, just, I would just roll my window down and be like, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Can I introduce myself or <laughs> like I'm bored the too? The area of town in East Nashville where I live, the driver's I mean, driving is so bad around here. I, I drove around in Boston, so I know, quote unquote, like bad driving. I think Boston drivers are more smart. Like we're doing all these things and we're cutting corners and we're, you know, whatever we're doing that's kind of breaking the rule. But I do think that people know what they're doing and everyone's kind of a quick thinker and smart. And East Nashville, it's like, there's just no, like, it's, I don't think people were properly trained how to drive around here. Maybe down South, you kind of just like learn from your dad or something. But anyway, I'm just saying that that would never fly in Nashville because you miss the, the light turns green. And if you're a second late, you're getting honked at and <laughs> just impatient. I, I was just talking to a friend about how uh, crazy it is that when you think about if you're in the United States or whatever, like the driving rules are complete. As soon as you cross into another state. It's just fucking, you don't know. You don't know. Like you can make a left in certain places. There's a, like Jersey has those annoying kind of jug handle things that are just like, you cannot make a left in New Jersey. You have to, you know, if whatever you want is on this side of the road, you can see it. You'll drive past it <laughs> and then have to loop around and then you'll drive past it again. <laughs> so, so you're always like within, within eye shot of the place you want to be, but it's just like, you have to make like a tons of different kind That's of fucking awesome. turns to get there. Not and me. it's yeah it is it's it's really really fucking frustrating especially when you keep missing where you're supposed to be and you're like you're like if i could just get out of my car i could walk yeah <laughs> but but you have to go around um i don't, I don't I, think you get it until you're driving and yeah. somebody's like you gotta make a left what are you doing get in the right lane so yep. man well, yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly exactly yeah, yeah. And the other thing too is i don't know about you but like i have no sense of direct i think tom tom is a good sense of direction I have zero sense of direction. And the uh, my friend that I travel with and we do stand up together, she also has no sense of direction. So literally, even if we do have GPS, there was one time where we were she was driving the car, we were going to Michigan, I don't remember something like that. And uh, or no, or it was Virginia, whatever it was, doesn't matter. But there was a bridge and literally there was a fork in the road, and for whatever fucking reason, before we got to the bridge, she went left and we were headed toward oncoming traffic on the on a bridge. And I like I was so kind of calm. I didn't get like I don't know. I was oddly calm, where I was like, "This is how we go." <laughs> I was like, and I was like, "I think those are lights." I don't know. And then she like freaked out and did this like crazy ass K turn to get us out of there. But yeah, and she was like, "Sorry about that." And I was like, "I thought maybe we just wouldn't make it to the gig." I don't know. I <laughs> wasn't really worried about it, but yeah, it's always interesting. I'm jealous that you got to go to Ireland when you were 16, though. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. yeah, I wasn't expecting to get to go at such a young age. I had been thinking about wanting to go to Ireland for a while, but I assumed I like, oh, that won't be able to happen until I'm 19. I'll have to be like an adult. I'll have to have my own money. Mm. But I was um, invited to actually go there and ended up going in February. At the I forget what year that is, but back when I was 16. And I stayed there for about eight days and I'm still in almost, it's not daily contact anymore, but it's like 
weekly contact with one of the friends that I made on the second day I got there. And so I went oh. there many times and stayed at the same home. And that's just another example of the kindness and generosity of them. People in Ireland. That's awesome. Did you go to play music over there or were you just going to visit or? I wasn't really to perform, although we did perform. I went with three other girls who were around my age. Um, we were all learning Irish music from the same teacher. And we didn't, we had like one performance that was pretty low key with other um, Irish kids. So we did kind of a fusion thing where we, we played tunes for them. They played tunes for us. We learned tunes together. And then we put together a little performance. Um, but before that, it was kind of like taking workshops. So some of the good players in Ireland taught little workshops. And we got to go to some of the, the tourist spots and just make friends with players our age. So it was really cool because learning traditional Irish fiddle as a kid and being homeschooled, my world was so small. And when I would go wow. play music, I was always like the young one with all these older people who played Irish music. And it made a huge difference when I went to Ireland and I saw all these kids my age playing and playing better than me. It was so cool because I was kind of like just playing in my living room most of the time. And then I played the same music in Ireland and I saw how like all these different cool pubs and all these people playing all the tunes. So when I went back home and I'm playing, I'm like, I know that this same stuff is it's happening just me in my living room but i know there's like a whole world over in ireland mm -hmm. where this, yeah. it's really alive and there's like nice a lot of social things happening um it was really fun to be in the pubs and play that's cool that you were i mean i don't know too many people who are homeschooled but it's kind of funny because i feel like thanks to the pandemic like there's a lot of people who were temporarily homeschooled do you yeah. feel any kind of like particular way about the way people were framing being like like the the response to being homeschooled as if you were not going to be able to function as a human like you know what i mean like is there anything particular yeah. you didn't like about being homeschooled or do you feel like um what the, what I the fuck, guys like i'm fine i didn't get to compare it to anything else so mm. you know when you don't have comparison you just sure you don't know if anything's yeah. better <laughs> i didn't go yeah, yeah. school at all until i went to community college so uh I can't really, I think at this point, I think I've always, I've never really entertained the thought of being upset that I didn't go to public school. I just. Right. Didn't you didn't miss anything. Benefit me. Yeah. And I've, I've heard a lot about kids being bullied and I didn't have to deal with that. And yeah, I, I uh, can't imagine what that would be like. So I'm grateful to not have to deal with that. I also think I have a, possibly a bit more of like an individuality to me because I, I know that kids tend to follow trends together mm -hmm, and yeah really closed off from what all the other kids our age were doing. I did have a pretty secluded childhood. Um, and also a lot of the things that they were doing, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have been allowed to do because we had a strict childhood as well. So uh, I kind of developed my own things like traditional Irish music at a young age and being really yeah. into that and uh, whatever else. So I'm grateful for that because I do like kind of my being unique or whatever uniqueness I have. Uh, and to answer your question about the pandemic, I did try to capitalize on that because I felt like in a, in a genuine way, because mm -hmm. I felt like because I was homeschooled, I could help out with kids that are stuck at home. And I actually did interview oh. a couple times with some parents who had their kids at home, but they needed like a tutor to help. And they mm -hmm. were just like at a loss because for a lot of people, homeschooling is just like nothing they ever thought of doing or even sure. have around them. And I was like, hey, I know what kids are going through. I know how hard it can be to stay focused. I know, you know, this kind of thing. So I was like, I can come and work with these kids. But actually, never, nothing came about that, even though I interviewed a couple of times for mm -hmm. things like that. Their um, loss. Um, yeah, maybe. <laughs> do, you, do you feel like you have a better handle on this? Because so, like you said, you, you know, you had different restrictions <laughs> when you were growing up because you were homeschooled and you're less maybe prone to peer pressure in that way. Do you feel yeah. like you have a better handle on social media and maybe that whole because, you know, there's a lot of people who overdo it, me, yeah. um, or like stress about it or anything like that. But that is kind of a, a peer pressure filled zone. And you said you had that individuality about you. Do you feel like you're better at managing it or is it too still too like uh, too much information? too much input i if you look at like who i follow on instagram there's very few if any well there's me there's, um and then no, i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> my follow list is very small and i'm not following a bunch of people who do I, i'm mostly following people i actually know so it'd be a lot of musicians just a lot of local friends sure. 
I kind of like to think of, of Instagram as a scrapbook of my life. And so I'm not wanting, I don't really, I just, I want to see friends and I want them to post when they go on a nice vacation or a friend's oh. birthday or a wedding. And I kind of want to post that right now. It's pretty amazing because it's a bunch of shows, but I'm not really following people who use social media as like their business. And so it's like perfectly curated things. I do kind of steer away from that. The other thing that I notice about social media and I see it in other people is like someone losing their self-awareness. Mm. Uh, if someone photoshops or really blurs their skin, right, like almost to the point that like their nose is kind of getting blurred away, I'm right. always so confused. I don't think I would ever get to that point where I would post something and in my head think it it's not fooling, like think I'm fooling people. Right. And, and know like how artificial it looks mm -hmm. but i see that on social media where people are like i don't know like you lose touch with reality you're so used to your filters and you don't notice that like how unreal that looks i don't want to look so different in real life than some fake pictures of me you know right, so right. i legitimately know somebody that does not look like they look like on social media and it's <laughs> mind-blowing I, you know, I can't yeah. wrap my head around what would make them want to do that. And they're not a public figure or a performer. Oh, so wow. like, what makes them want to put such a different image of themselves out there? I don't get it. Yeah, I know. My brain does not understand. Like, that would never work for me. I would mm. never. Because I think I'm too, mo I'm too, like, realistic about everything. And so I would just be like, I would not <laughs> want to, like, have all these fake things and want everyone to, like, I was like, but they would all know I'm not that. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. But now, do you, do you feel pressure as now that you're becoming more of a a brand, being part of Gaelic Storm and building out? Do you feel pressure to create like a separate entity that's like utilized by the machine to show your business and your brand and who you are in that way? Or no? The only the the way I'm approaching Instagram and my like Facebook music page right now is. I wasn't expecting to be a full-time musician. So now that's what I am. And it's hmm. like, Hey, well now I need to put this stuff out there and I'm not, I'm, I don't like um, tour nonstop with Gaelic storm. And so when I'm not on tour, there are a couple of different months where there's a break like Christmas. And then there's like a break in the kind of late spring where the guys go on trips with their families and they really soak up family time before the summer festivals. So there are going to be months when I'm not going to have shows with Gaelic Storm. And so I do have to now hopefully get supplemental gigs. So I mm. do look at Instagram now as social media is the place to go when you want to get information on someone. So I'm like trying to put that information out and stay relevant. I mean, at this point, I'm really building up relevance because I'm just right. getting going um, and then kind of build it up and maintain it so that I can hopefully continue to keep this going because I know that they would like to have me for several years and I'm thinking of them as like a long-term thing at, at this point right now like the thing that would stop me is if I were to get married and have a kid like yeah. you have to stop when you have a baby so yeah but I'm 26 so like that's not nothing I'm like feeling rushed to do yeah, uh, nice. yeah, so really I just need to use Instagram as a way to like keep showing my music uh, get people to follow me and stay following me. So I want it to be interesting. I don't want it to be like, you know, a dump of selfies all the time. And like, get it. That's your face. It looks the same every day. <laughs> I, mean, I feel that way when people post a new selfie every day. I'm like, your face looks. Yeah. And also people tend, and I do this too, like people tend to have their like smile that they, mm -hmm. and then that's the same pose every day. Oh, and yeah, it is. You change it up and laugh and show different angles and stuff. And hopefully I do that. I don't really know how good I am about doing that. But I just, at least I don't want to like do the same, like, you know, every single day because that's going to get boring. And I don't, I don't want to waste my time on social media and yeah. I don't want to be cluttering up someone else's phone so that they waste five minutes looking at all my content. Like, yeah, there's a lot of that. And it's a hard, it's hard not to make it, you know, because like I'm, I'm oddly enough, I'm still, still kind of getting the hang of like, I know you're supposed to post every day. I know there's all these rules and I was all that shit. And I still, really stuff, I yeah. still don't, I still fucking like only recently did I start, you know, deciding like, all right, on Tuesday, I'm, but it's almost to be like a peace of mind. Cause I'm like, fuck it on Tuesday, I'm going to post this shit. And mostly it's for this show at this point now is like, cause that's kind of taken off. Um, 
and and whatever but then i'm like oh my god i haven't posted a clip of me doing stand-up let me do that so people know i do stand-up too and then i do that kind of shit and it's i don't i long for the day where i don't have to manage my own shit it'd be really great um and then i'm hoping i'll be able to like relinquish control over it because now it's like i've been doing it for so long by myself mm -hmm. that i'm like i don't know if i trust anybody to do any of this shit mm -hmm. i find it so weird that like my like so my businesses have their own brands and then i feel like i'm always posting on there trying to build but then my personal page, I feel like I neglect so much that I'm mm. like, I'm doing a disservice to myself that because mm. I like stuff to to remember the moments. Like I like to create a memory and then remember what I've been in. So, yeah, yeah so I'm able to like remember like big moments. But there's so many great small moments. I was talking about this with a couple of my guys because we'll be on the road together for hours. I'll be like, look at how pretty the sky is. I don't take a moment <laughs> to appreciate how pretty the sky is because I'm always running around doing stuff. I know it's weird. Whatever. <laughs> no, it's, no, it's just <laughs> sweet. <laughs> would you see the sunset and post the sunset? I would take a picture, but I wouldn't post the sunset. Yeah. But That's like when I get like a good picture, my personal stuff will get like if I'm in the Grand Canyon or if I'm in yeah. like yeah, if it's yeah. something that's stunning that I'm like, wow, I'm blessed to be here in this moment, right? Right. That nice. tends to be it. But it's funny, those don't get a million likes. Then the ones that are like me and my wife doing something, it gets hundreds of likes and I'm like, I'm like this is ridiculous. Right. I definitely, I definitely post stuff. I mean, I try not to do, unless I post something that I really enjoy. Like if it is like a nice view or whatever it is, I'll do it. But I know immediately I'll like take a picture of something cause I like it. And it'll be of like the sky or whatever, some horse shit, you know, or my cat, which whatever, you know what I mean? Like yeah. that's nice to throw out there, but I know immediately it's just going to get like 500, you know what I mean? Like it's just going to get likes and likes and likes. And then I'll be like, and here's this thing I've been working on for fucking a that's year. True project baby that you're so proud of yeah, yeah yeah and no one gives a shit and you're like okay, okay. well you know, that's the reason why i didn't ever desire or try to become a full-time musician the idea wow. of trying to get people, please come to my show please hear me. <laughs> yeah please, please yeah. buy my cd i'm like oh i don't want to beg like i don't yeah. like that and i also just don't i mean i'm practicing it now and it's going fairly well and also partly it's like i just have a lot of content to post after shows because people take videos and i just mm. simply post they're great but um thank you but yeah some of them got like really good the, the recent one that i used in the story of you whoever whatever was from the audience that got that video of you yeah. they were great that was like that was a good shot yeah and that's great because then that's just like there and i can save it and i people are lovely like they'll take photos and videos DM me it and allow me to save it and repost it as a reel. And that's nice. Just amazing. Like awesome. that's huge. And I yeah. really appreciate that. But if it, if I were trying to make it as like a traditional Irish fiddler, which that's not like a pop artist, like that's, mm -hmm. which that's going to be hard to make a good living on. Right. I would have to be constantly, Hey guys, I have this new thing. Da, 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 da. And like, I, I am like kudos and clapping for everyone who does that because it takes guts and you got to be a self starter. You got to be committed and you have to keep going and wait for your break. I'm so lucky because I did nothing and now I'm in this band. <laughs> <laughs> you did a little something. I mean, you did you did become an amazing fiddler. I so there you go. There's... On my own for my enjoyment and playing with friends. I mean, right. I moved to Nashville. I didn't really play once I got to Nashville. In Boston, I was playing all the time with my friends. I was just having fun. Like, just just learning how to play well because they all are all good musicians and just the practice. We play for like six hours, one session for three hours, the next one, for three hours, wow. that like a Saturday. Um, but as far as like, yeah, trying to make it as like a performer, there really wasn't much of that. And so then what did you want to do? I was working corporately. I was back in school. I've had some been blessed with some really good corporate jobs when I lived back in Boston. So I worked nice. at um, Zipcar and oh, I was working right. in accounts payable, which allowed me to work remotely. So I could go to Ireland for four, uh, for four months. I almost said four years for four months. <laughs> so I was just paying their bills and um, working remotely in Ireland. And I came back and took on more hours there. And I was an executive assistant for two of the top guys. And mm. then I moved over to a company called Climacell, which they have a new name now. I forget what their new name is, but they've um, really taken off. At the time, they were a startup. And it's a micro weather forecasting company. Wow. And so the headquarters were in Boston and I was the office manager of their headquarters. And then I was remotely managing their new office in Boulder and worked on that. So that was actually a huge job and that was amazing. 
Uh, and then from there, I moved to Nashville and the pandemic hit pretty soon. And I was working for an interior designer, was project manager for him. Uh. I loved that job because he was working for like Amy Strunk, who is the owner of the Titans, the yeah, yeah. Titans. And so she has like several homes. He was also working for a couple of country music stars. And we were going to their houses and I loved that job. That was so <laughs> working for him. Uh, but that ended, we tried to keep that remote, but then it ended during the pandemic. So I was kind of doing different things and went back to school to utilize the time. And then mm -hmm. everything changed and now I'm playing fiddle the whole time. What made you pick up the fiddle in the first place? My, I would say my grandfather is the main inspiration for it because it was my mom's choice that I would play the fiddle. I was seven when I started. I don't even remember that conversation. I just like remember going to my first lesson. I don't remember any options being given like, oh, you could learn guitar, piano, fiddle, whatever. Mm -hmm. I think it was pretty much decided like we're just going to put her on violin lessons. And my grandfather listens to a lot of bluegrass and Celtic, you know, Irish, Scottish, old time music. Um, and so I heard that a lot. And my mom also listened to it because she developed that love from her dad. So mm -hmm. I did start when I was seven. And I have I don't remember a time not having like the, the violin around me because when I would oh. stay with my grandparents, he would put me on his lap and teach me a little bit how to play. So when I went to my first lesson, I already could play Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. I already kind of had the basics of like you press and you hold a bow back and mm -hmm. forth. And I took to it pretty well. And I was also encouraged by my grandfather. I got a lot of positive reinforcement from family members. So I kept at it. And um, once I got into my teenage years, it really became my own passion. Because once I had gone to Ireland, I really made a bigger connection in my brain with it and it was more of like i wanted to do it i didn't just have to practice because that's great are paying for lessons like now i wanted right yeah and that's crazy that you went from boston to nashville and not for I, when you told me that you were you moved to nashville or you're originally from boston moved to nashville i just assumed you were like heavily into the music scene there did you not have any ink like just not have the bug to do it there because that's where people you're go usually in nashville right now right yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, um, so I really haven't learned any other style other than traditional Irish. And mm -hmm. playing Gaelic Storm, I'm loosening up my rigidity around the music. So I used to be very, like, pure, as we call it, pure drop Irish. Okay. Um, where it's like, I'm not going to Americanize it, like, modernize it. I'm going to play, like, exactly how it's been played for years and years and years in Ireland. Right. That's what my obsession was. I really had kind of taken on the responsibility of carrying on the tradition. And there are a lot of great fiddlers who are super talented and they do kind of jazz it up. I just felt like because I wasn't going to try to make it in the scene or anything, since it's my own little thing that I do, I just thought I want to keep playing it really traditionally. And my teachers taught me that and they were really good about that. So with Gaelic Storm, now I'm I'm doing a lot of like double string and I'm doing a little bit of chopping and I'm playing super fast and we changed the arrangements a little bit. And so it's definitely more rocky and more modern. And that's fun. It's been really fun to actually loosen up and not take everything so seriously. Uh, but to circle back to your question, I haven't learned any other styles. So mm -hmm. when I came to Nashville, there is a great Irish music scene. It's, it's actually been around since like the nineties, at least, if not more, there's some really great players. It took me a second to like get settled in and go see them. And I attended like one session and then COVID hit. So, I mean, the, my whole story is that like mostly it's been COVID that I've been. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I wasn't planning on doing any like country stuff. So gotcha. sure, if I want to learn country music, I could end up playing on Broadway. But like, as I said, like I wasn't trying to. Do yeah, that's kind of Gaelic Storm's a little better than Broadway. I have to have a few yeah. like. You get and to travel. I, are you like, do you stay out and hang out? Like, cause I know you're all younger than those guys. So like, are you, and are you like, all right, I know you're going to bed at soon as we, as soon as we get off stay. like, are they still party at it? Like, do they still hang out and do that kind of shit? They still, yeah, they still. Do they seem like it? Yeah. They're all very young at heart. Um, and they're not even that old. It's like, no, I know. Yeah. I'm just a piece of shit. I, don't mean to <laughs> I, I phrased it. We both, we both zinged him. I think I, I did it this time and then you did it early in the show. So it's fine. <laughs> no, but they're great. I mean, they do have a lot of like, you know, energy and shit. I just didn't know. Cause you, like you said, you're 26. So I don't know if you're like traveling from place to place and then you're like, 
peace. I'm going. To, I'm going to check out some friends in the bar scene and shit. Are you like? You I've know? only done that a tiny bit. Um, I'm not like a super party animal. Nice. I know how to have a good time. I just don't need to go like overboard. So right. sometimes I've gone to bed before them because I do also just really like to have a good night's sleep. And I can't get away with if I'm not gonna if I'm gonna drink a lot, not eat healthy, and also not get a lot of sleep, I will have pimples. Like oh, I, gotcha. I'm still young that I have to deal with like skin issues. <laughs> so I do have to sometimes I do have like kind of have this internal monitor going on. But I, I would say we kind of tend to go to sleep around the same time because also they're really good at making sure I'm safe. So nice. when, if we're out at like festivals and we're gonna walk to a bar, I'm not gonna leave the bar and walk back on my own to the hotel. Oh, that's good. We yeah. tend to be at a hotel that's really close by. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, like if I'm getting tired, usually one of them is like, oh, yeah, yeah, I can totally go to bed and they'll walk with me. Um, so. The first I time I saw them was at a Scotch Irish Fest in New Jersey. And the fans are like really, really great. Like they're like everybody's having a good time. I can't I can imagine they probably get bombarded by them after the fact because I don't I think they hang hung around and signed some stuff because it was my my stepdad really liked Gaelic Storm, and then obviously got my mom into it, and then eventually I came around to like going to them with stuff when I was when I was just a kid, when I was younger. And at first I was kind of like, I don't want to go to a Scotch Irish event, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I was like a kid, and I was like, I don't know what's there. And then the music just kind of blew me away, and um, you know, now I was like, like when I got to LA, it was kind of weird because like I was just that Italian dude who was like blasting like Irish music with bagpipes going down Sunset Boulevard, ninety miles an hour. Uh, you know what I mean? But it's it's like that shit that I just enjoy. Like, it's fun. I mean, I have like a, a like an eclectic taste in all kinds of music and stuff like that. I feel like, but they're just, I don't know. This is a lot of fun. It just looks like you guys are have been playing together forever, even though you only started with them recently. Like, I know like, that's what everyone says when they yeah. meet after. It's so sweet. Yeah. It is awesome. It, it really was a very, very easy connection. Mm. Um, because when I went into the the audition, I was kind of like, I don't know, like, I'm really just going to go in there and kind of feel it out and see how it is. But I was skeptical about whether I would take it all the way up until I got the phone call that they, when they offered it to me. Wow. Just it's like such a big life change to be like, I've been on this career path, this like plan. And not that I had a five year plan or anything. It's just like, I was, right. at least I had a couple months figured out. And then to switch over to the full-time performing Irish. Also just the fact of like traveling a lot and being away from my boyfriend and like mm. being on the road. And I didn't know if I would like having to interact with people all the time. Cause I'm a little yeah. bit, like, I'm, I like to be with people. I also like to be alone, but I don't like to be alone for too long. Then I really need to see people. So I'm like a little bit of a mixed bag in that sense. But I was just like, mm. that is going to be a commitment. I'm going to be like on the road and I'm going to have to like do hair and makeup and an outfit and heels and get up on stage and perform and talk to people. And then you travel. And I was just like, do I even know how to do that? It's kind of scary. To <laughs> it's all really been pretty um, natural. Nice. It felt natural. But with them, when we met and we had the, uh, the audition and we talked for a while before and talked a while after it was so easy, like just mm -hmm. conversing with them was really easy. And so everyone has said that it looks like I've been a part of the band forever. And yeah, I think when we got on the first tour and just hanging out, I think there were one of them told me that they were a little worried that since I was so young, their other fiddler was been a little bit older and more experienced as a touring musician. They just thought maybe I would be like super chatty and like maybe like, <laughs> as a man, like girls like, talks all the time. And I'm actually quite quiet. I, mm -hmm. I don't like need to be heard. I definitely will interact and be involved in conversation. I don't have a lot of like uh just things to add yeah i tend to just I, I, support to be a, being a listener i love that they thought that because that's like one of those things too like when we're like when i'm i i love my friend joanne who comes out on the road with me because we're both kind of the same like there's other people that ask to open for me and stuff like that and i'm always like oh sorry no um <laughs> but i'm like oh it's jo you know if, if joanne ever can't make it she never can't make um you know maybe like rarely but like it's one of those things like when you find people you like to travel with you're just like fuck it like we're not like we both know each other's habits and we're not like I've been with people who just won't shut the fuck up. Like you're on a like a five hour car ride and I'm like, you have not stopped talking once. We actually <laughs> talk about me. <laughs> Tom is always asking me about my life story. And I'm just like, Tom, how many times? You've heard it. <laughs> yeah. I'm like Jesus Christ. 
Tell me all your childhood trauma again, John. <laughs> <laughs> and then you know what's upsetting is that he mocks me when I tell him. He's like, boo hoo. Uh, I'm like, dude, no. I'm pouring my heart out here. <laughs> um, but, it's, but like it is, it's it's hard to find people that you like traveling with. So I'm sure they like yeah. really loved the fact that you were like uh, just chill and relaxed. Yeah, um, they're all chill. And I would say I, I match that. I'm pretty chill. Nice. You mentioned your boyfriend, who I know is a musician, too. Is yeah. that harder? Because, I mean, one, you, you didn't mention any downtime, by the way, when you were talking about, like, even when they were with their families, you were like, yeah, and then I can find another gig doing this and doing that. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, I do you care about downtime? I mean, like, how does that work? Because being, you know, I never wanted to date somebody else who was <clears throat> another comedian because I just didn't want to have to have that. I know what the lifestyle is like. And at the same time, it's kind of like, well, why not? Because you both have shared experience. You both understand why you're not around as much and what you have to do and the cost. But at the same time, I was like, when the fuck would we see each other? Like, you know, it would be it'd be ridiculous. But do you do you find that difficult? So it is a little bit difficult. There was definitely a bit of a learning curve when I first was heading out and coming back. Right. Kind of wanted him to like run and like pick me up and like swing me around and kiss me and be like, I missed you so much. Cause I was like, I've been gone for five days. Like <laughs> you just dying to see me again. And it would be a little bit more like I just get home and his life is carrying on and I just sit like oh, that. Yeah, yeah. It was a little bit of a letdown because I'd have like this expectation built up. Um yeah. he is he's really busy. He's a really hard working guy who doesn't also he doesn't really have a lot of downtime. Mm. It's a little bit hard for him to maybe like not do anything for a whole day. Right. Yeah. Trying to remember, like maybe around Christmas break when he's at his parents' house, he's like willing to just like lounge by the pool and not do much. But he's a really hard working guy and enjoys work. Work is not a struggle, work is kind of what he does. Right. So and I would say I'm similar to that. If I wasn't similar, I would never be able to be with him because it would be like if I were just like a couch potato, that would be not work. So I am, sure. I am hard working, but I'm a little bit more. If you were right here, he'd be like, yeah, your room's messier than me. And <laughs> you sit around a lot. <laughs> so I definitely, <laughs> I definitely do sit around and waste time and look on my phone a lot. But um, what, what's the question? Is it hard? <laughs> <laughs> it's, I would say having my lifestyle be a bit more like his is better for us. Oh, wow. When I worked corporately and I was like, I'm going to be gone from nine to five, which I haven't had a job like that in a while because of COVID. Mm -hmm. But I was kind of anticipating how that would be hard because his nights are later. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Everything was just different. And I would, I was like, we're going to be on totally different clocks. Now I'm going to be kind of on the same sleep schedule as him. And uh, he gets it. Like, I don't have to work with, some guy who's like, my girlfriend's gone. I don't really like this. Like he's very supportive and so happy for me and really encouraged me to take this because I was more skepti skeptical and questioning myself and whether I could do this. And he was mm. like, this is huge. You absolutely <laughs> love you. They're going to pick you. They're going to want you. You're going to be great. You're going to be a natural. He kind of envisioned the whole thing before awesome. I could see myself doing that. So he's great. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Is he, is he ever like, come play for my band? No, no, never been asked. <laughs> I'm offering background vocals all the time, but no. <laughs> wow. no gonna, it'll happen. It's an all guy band, and I don't think that. I think you kind of have to have a rule because if one guy has his girlfriend joining, then the other guy's gonna be like, "Well, my girlfriend can do this," and that's gonna be something to quarrel over. So, oh wow, they sound great with what they're doing. They're all very talented. Yeah, they're very they're they're awesome. I like fan of their music. So, you uh, know, it's crazy. It was you who. Um, I wound up picking, I, I guess I didn't even realize it, but you had posted them so much after I started following you off a of Gaelic storm that it literally just seeped into my brain. And yeah, yeah cause I didn't, I, I thought somebody else had mentioned them. And then I think they had mentioned, um, Oh, most, I get what you're recalling. Yeah. 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 So yes. it was one of those things that because you like share your boyfriend stuff like a, a lot or whatever, that it just fucking got into my head. And I was just like, of course I know this band forever, uh, well, <laughs> I get it. but yeah. they're great. I did. I did start listening. They're awesome. Yeah, I was hoping that that would be what would happen. And since I was getting, I was getting, like, when I first got announced as the player, the new player for Gaelic Storm, mm. I was at a hotel, and I was looking at my phone, and every second, it was new follower, new follower. Every single second, nice. I just went up, like, hundreds and hundreds, and then it finally slowed down. But I thought, if I can repost to this whole new audience of his stuff, I'm sure other people will notice that that's great music. 
right. and follow. So I guess you're one of them. Yeah. Yeah. There you got you go. me hook, line and sinker. And yeah. Um, where are you guys going? Are you, are you looking forward? Like, has there any been, uh, has there been any place in particular that has blown you away that you love performing like any particular venue? Yeah, my first favorite show that I did was actually Northampton, Massachusetts. Oh. And that that was like my third show in with them. And it was, the crowd was amazing. It was so funny because I like step forward to the middle and I play something and they would just go crazy. They're just Mm. like looking at me and like smiling. And and I was looking at them just like smiling, like shaking my head. It was so bizarre to go like, to be so excited mm-hmm. over what I was doing. So I've, I guess I'm kind of getting a little bit used to that, but that is in my mind as an important show because um, that was the show. I think I was like three shows in, so I was finally starting to feel just more of the fun over more of the concentration. Nice. And I got to play in my hometown that I grew up in, Lowell, Massachusetts, which is an outdoor show. So that was really meaningful because I played on that stage as a little girl for many years and then to come wow. back years later wow. in the band. Um, and we've had some really big festival crowds. So when I played the Dublin Irish Festival, it was at least like 14,000 people. It could have been more. Mm-hmm. I think that was a the number they gave me was like 14,000 people. Uh, wow. So that, I have an eyelash in my eye, but um, that was so really cool. You could say you're getting emotional. It's fine. We'll, we'll accept it on here. <laughs> I have this problem where like eyelashes fall into my eyeball every day. <laughs> so yeah, that was a really huge audience and that was pretty cool. That's awesome. Um, and we're going to the West Coast next month and I've only been as far west as Colorado. So I'm really excited to see Holy shit. in Portland. Yeah. Oh, that's so, awesome. That's we're just here bl- one day each. Oh, okay. So I probably see like the outside of a hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you have a good view. That's all. Yeah, and we'll go to a coffee shop for sure. Yeah, absolutely. That's fucking awesome. I was gonna ask, is there some place like that you try to hit in every town when you when you're going on tour? Like something that you want to see in every um, place? I we haven't really done much sightseeing. I'll we'll walk around so I get a nice walk in. That way I can see whatever area I'm in. And sometimes we go to a, a nice restaurant. If okay. they've gone there a couple times, they know which place they like to eat. So we'll go there. We were in St. Louis and I walked from the venue to the arch and walked around the park there. So like every once in a while, I'm able to do something like that. Um, I guess ideally if I were, if I had like time and I could kind of get around more easily, I'd want to go to like little thrift shop, uh, thrift shops or like vintage shops and try to pick up cool, interesting clothing or jewelry. But yes, I really haven't. I mean, I'm not even going to the hotel gym and I keep thinking I'm going to, go downstairs to the gym and I don't dude know. some of those gym I mean I, I always try to make it to a hotel gym or whatever whenever I'm there and it's hilarious that everyone you go to has one or two fucking machines that work and like the rest are just use at your own risk like I'm, I'm sure you're saying in nicer hotels than I am when I'm on the road mm-hmm. nobody gives a shit about comedians even like getting like I've noticed like I've been able to hang out with a lot of bands and stuff like that and people that we have on the show will invite me to stuff and even then it's like you're walking backstage and security you know they make sure everything is good and with comedians they're like if you want to get backstage to see a comic famous or not, there's like, okay, everybody with a handgun move to the front row, please. If you want you know, like you're just like, really, we're just letting anybody back. <laughs> like, What is going on? Is there any security? Um, but uh, it's, it's crazy. It's like the gyms there are just like, I don't know. It's just wild. But yeah. I do love the thrift shop thing. Like there's, it's all blurry. Cause uh, my room is also a mess. Um, but uh, my blurry. office is like, just to hide a messy room. <laughs> Absolutely. My, this, bl- I wouldn't give a shit if it wasn't for the fact that I pro like, there's just shit all over the place in my office, but there's uh, records and stuff in the back. And every time like we'll hit up a city to do like stand up or whatever, I try to find like a thrift shop and just pick up old records or something like that. And um, any of these dumb pins and whatever that, that, that probably, that's something you're collecting on your, Yep. I try to get something from every, every place. Like if I find stuff from like little places, like I kind of know where each one came from. Um, and then there's just some stuff that I'll just order online or whatever. But for the most part, all of this stuff came from like being on the road. I just collect something, tack it on. Cool. Yep. That's fun. Now I can't get through a metal detector. So oh, yeah, you got to take that off. Yeah. yeah. Covered in buttons. Yeah. The only thing I ever take when I'm traveling, I like rocks for some reason. So like I was in Iceland, so I found a piece of lava rock. I was in that's the Grand Canyon. Oh, that's cool. 
Yeah. I love, I love you get a rock in New Jersey. Or you, like, is that where you live? Do you live in New Jersey? So you don't need it. I live in New York, but you know what? Maybe I'll take a rock tomorrow if I could find one. I don't know. I don't have any Jersey rocks. Yeah. A lava rock is so when you were like, I take rocks, I'm like, from like outside the hotel, or like, how do you like, do you date it with a marker? Like, well, you know what's funny? When we were in Iceland, we were driving in like this, it was just all lava rocks and dips, and we're trying to drive through it. We get out, it was the most gorgeous thing I've seen. I look on the floor, I'm like, that's the craziest piece of lava molten form. So I took it. We so we leave, and I'm like, I'm keeping this, I'm bringing this home. In the gift shop, they're selling the same rocks. <laughs> I picked up. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> what a racket. <laughs> That's great. But, yeah. I just saw in the comments that Jackie says that my skill is impressive. So I'm not yes. sure I'll be a, a fan of the band, and that's really sweet. Oh, then I'm assuming it's a girl because it looks like it's blonde. Yep, uh, she's a girl. Yeah, Jackie's a friend of the show. She's on here a lot during the uh yeah, on the lives. We appreciate it. We really enjoy it. And then usually if she has any questions, we bring them up so that you could. Uh, that's a perfect segue, by the way. Great job, Natalia. That, <laughs> if anybody has any questions, I'll be sure to bring them up on screen so we could field them as we're getting closer to the end of our hour for sure. Yeah. Um, so what I got to ask you now, you're you know, you're doing the fiddling thing. I, I got who are your influences, even though as we you, you quiz me backstage and I fucking suck because I do love the fiddle like that's like if I hear a fiddle in any song, any piece of music, I'm hooked. I don't know what it is, but it makes me instantly happy. And then you were like, oh, who are your favorite fiddlers? And I was like, no, I can't not tell you nothing. I don't know. I'm not I, I should know. And now I feel bad for not knowing and I'll I'll figure it out. I think we did have a guest on who does fiddle. Conrad Wirt, I said, is uh, got a great um Band possessed by Paul James. He does amazing songs. Um, and I don't know, maybe John Denver, I think, played the fiddle. I like John Denver, but that's it. That's all I got. So who are your influences? Do you know Eileen Ivers? I do not. Okay, you need to get a pen and paper. I need to give you some names. <laughs> Let's do this. this back. Um, when I was a kid, I listened to a lot of Eileen Ivers. And she okay. has this amazing CDs because she does a fusion of African influence into Irish music. So there's some really cool wow. that she's done. It's definitely something to uh, listen to. And she's extremely talented on the fiddle and Sweet. she has an electric fiddle. So she does the pedals and it goes, wow, wow, wow. And that's oh, no. <laughs> it's pretty cool. <laughs> so I listened to a lot of her and let's see. I also listened to a Scottish fiddler named Hanukkah Castle. Okay. Her, her last name is spelled like Cassell, but I'm pretty sure it's pronounced Castle. Sweet. Her name Hanukkah is like the um, like the holiday, which is a really cool name, actually. It's spelled like the holiday? I was going to ask that. I think it is spelled like... Wow. No, actually, it's, I don't think it is, because Hanukkah is like a U-H in it, right? It's a C-H-A... Wow. A-U-N-A-K-K-A. Is that how that is? Is that how you spell it? Yeah, C-H-A... E K A, so it's not spelled like the. Holiday. I'll cut all this out too, so it doesn't look like we don't give a shit about the holiday. <laughs> but uh, we're all like, is it a C H? Anyway, Christmas is great. Um, <laughs> you guys ever hear of Christmas? It's pretty fucking cool. Yeah, um, Monica writes a lot of her own music, and she's a really talented Scottish player. So she has this traditional Scottish music, which is a little bit different than Irish music, and she also writes her own music, which is really beautiful. I listened to her a lot as a as a girl. Then when I got older and I was in more serious Irish studies, I was listening to like old farmers who have, who were recorded playing in their farmhouse in Ireland on like a cassette player. So wow. we would listen to really muffled, scratchy cassette tapes um, of these fiddlers and they would write music and, and uh, just play other traditional tunes and we were learning from them. So that's kind of the, the part of like the super traditional music that I was studying. So those names would, you wouldn't like probably really find them on like Spotify. So, mm. uh, but I'll right now there. other, other musicians that I really love um, my friend, Dylan Foley, he's won the all Ireland fiddle competition over 18, which is like, if you win that you're considered the best over 18 Irish fiddler in the world he's american but he, you can win against irish people so he won that he actually is from new york and he lives in nashville now so i get to see him frequently and play with him he's phenomenal they nice. have some cds out um that's dylan foley and actually a band that i met on tour recently they're really cool and they're gonna be huge um 
they've been around for a couple of years and I feel like they're just right on the brink of like totally taking off. Their, their band name is called Boxing Banjo. They have a really cool song to check out called um, Kansas City, which is actually a cover song, but I just love their arrangement of it. And the fiddle playing in that song, the like bridge, I'm obsessed with, wow. with the fiddle player in the band. He's younger than me. Um, he's Irish, four Irish guys. And he's his tone, his fiddle tone is gorgeous. Wow. So I would check them out because if you love Irish music, you're going to love their CD. So I'll just end with those, but um, there are so many, I have so many friends who are great players that live in Boston and in Nashville and great. still yeah. inspired by them. And um, do you know Flogging Molly? So that could be like a name of a tune, but that could also most likely be that's a, a band. Another, another a great band. band. Yeah. And I, you know, that's what I thought you were talking about when you said you pictured like taller dude, like, I don't know how tall Flogging the guys from Flogging Molly are, but they're pretty, he's yes. pretty tall, I think. And like, because I was like, oh, I think she means flogging Molly before, but then I was like, no, she would know. Maybe I'll discover this right now. That'd be great. So That'd be amazing. Live on air. Yeah, yeah. She's like, that's the band I thought I'd be playing with. They're not. They're not in kilts. No, they're, they're men in kilts with chest hair. <laughs> I'm gonna do Google men in. No, please don't. <laughs> no, no, good. We'll lose you completely. You'll be like men and kills with Jack. Jack here. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're not gonna. That's. This is what happens. This a is what... Bit exciting. Yeah. Please don't. You save that for later. <laughs> and we. <laughs> this is when we like cut to commercial. <laughs> Um, how much more time do we have on this? I kind of want to go now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. I get it. <laughs> Listen, it's your time too. You know what I mean? You do what you need to do. This is the first time we're going to get banned from fucking Twitch because she's like, you know what? I'm just going to do it now. Um, <laughs> totally fine. It's a first time for everything. It's, it's totally cool. I'm okay with it. Um, we'll just black out our screens. It'll be complete audio. Um, it's well, totally to fine. Your question, I actually don't know the name. The fit, their fiddler is a woman and she's so amazing okay so i will look them up then yeah she's really great yeah you'd like them a lot. Yeah. do you have a favorite song that you've been playing with because i think i told you mine is um no you um, didn't yeah i wanted yeah to. um who in the fucking what the, i'm blanking on the uh, mechanical bull is one of my favorites oh my god that's the one that i have such a hard time performing is it really oh it's, it's it is not get the one spot we literally i kind of flubbed it up on stage the other night no way got, band back to the hotel and steve started bringing it up and i was like steve we're not going to talk about it oh. we're not going to talk about it steve like i just can't even talk about it wow. because i feel like i shouldn't mess it up and i just can't seem to nail it i like nail it some nights and i don't nail it other nights it's what is the, it about the song it's the and i'm not i'm still just still getting used to like playing to a drummer mm. he does all the syncopation, like a lot of stuff. And I just kind of like lose my downbeat in that. It's not his wow. fault, it's totally my fault. So, and also I am dealing with sound issues. Um, briefly, like when you go on stage, if you're playing with all the players, your fiddle is more blended. The second they all stop, suddenly my fiddle super loud in my ear. So I'm dialed in to be with the, all the band members playing. When we play Mechanical Bull, it's just me and Steve at first. Right. Uh, Turn down my ears because otherwise I'm playing and like my my ears just pierced with my own sound. Um, wow. But then I have to like turn it back up because then the rest of the band is. And I think the sound guy said there's something he can do to help me with that. But it's funny that you mentioned Mechanical Bull because that's a bit of like the bane of my existence right now. Oh my God. That's so uh, Yeah. Now I feel bad. But it yeah. literally is. I think the first like couple, I don't even know if it's at last a minute or whatever, but that intro is like one of the most beautiful like intros to a song like ever. It's so, I don't know, man. It just gets me like right um, in the feels. It is pretty. Do you know their song Faithful Land? Because that yes. the feels. Yeah. I really like enjoying uh, it really like enjoying <laughs> God. still thinking about those other guys aren't you <laughs> um i do this thing where i'm gonna say one word and then my brain thinks of another word uh, and yeah. i just yeah. say i really like and then i thought enjoying would be a nicer word to say <laughs> i'm really enjoying playing that song and we're doing it live now it's one of the new ones we started that's, cool. um, that's a great song i also like doing the night pat murphy died Ooh, that's Super a really good one. Wow, and I feel like that one would be a kind of a hard one. It's fun. Yeah, it must be fun to play, but that I feel like that's a hard one. 
no, it, it's it's an easier one. To That's find. great. I don't want to put it in your head, but you're like, no, it wasn't until you just fucking said something. Yeah. Psyched me out, you dick. There are a lot of a lot of ones that are really fun. Um, Lovers wreck. People are really excited that we're doing that one now. We don't do it every night, but when we do, I just see the people in the audience singing along to it. Oh. Um, and Johnny Jump Up is also really oh, yeah. Because my fiddle backing thing is really moody, actually. I get mm. to do long notes and go down low, and I kind of do this thing with my bow where I make it sound moody. Nice. You know what the term is for what I'm doing? But I enjoy that one because I feel kind of cool when I Sweet. do Sweet. That's fun. Yeah. yeah. That's really awesome. And it's a good thing that I wasn't uh, in, you know, bullshit mode before when you were listing players. Because when you said the farm, farmers one, uh, the old farmers, so like, when you said you listen to old farmers, I was, I was my brain was going to be like, should you be like, yeah, you know, I love that. That's a great band. That's a good. <laughs> and you were like, no, literally. <laughs> literally old farmers. Old farmers. Uh -huh. Yeah. They're I mean, also good really just, a lot of people just own a farm and they have cattle or sheep or whatever yeah and so these guys that's what they would do i mean they a lot well, many people played an instrument in ireland and that was their form of socializing and dancing singing playing and so they'd come home from working on the farm and probably play next to the fire nice and, awesome. uh, that them. is that's incredible um do we have any more questions tom no, but Jackie said she is definitely going to check out Gaelic Storm, which is great. But don't forget to check out Natalia K's Instagram. What's your Instagram, too? Because we know we want to let them know your social media and where to find you. Yeah, it's Talia. So the T-A-L-Y-A -A underscore K is where you can find me. And then Gaelic Storm is Gaelic underscore, underscore Storm. Nice. Perfect. Yeah. Um, I got to ask you the same three questions that we ask every guest on the show. Oh, dear. Okay. So here we go. Brace yourself. Um, first question is kind of a softball question. So if you could go back in time and talk to your younger self and give yourself a piece of advice that would help you out today, what would it be? Oh, um, it would, I've always had a hard time, like believing that people want to be friends with me and that's oh. <laughs> getting really honest right off the bat, but I would say that's probably the biggest thing. Like I used to really have a hard time going and doing social things and engaging with it because mm. I kind of assumed no one really cares if I show up and no one really wants to talk to me. Right. Um, part of like being homeschooled and not really having the practice and yeah. So that's been really fun because actually recently in the, about like the last year, I feel like that little voice has diminished a lot because I'm getting to meet all these people and I'm hanging out with so many new people and making great connections. Nice. And uh, yeah, I think I wasted a lot of time believing that feeling like I didn't belong in social settings. Wow. So, That's great. Yeah. That's really um, interesting. I can't wait till you're in the area. Me and John are definitely going to come check you out. I'm looking you said the spring. Attending a festival. Well, I said I think. I'm not sure. But I'm assuming. And okay. I, can, I can text you later and let you know. Sweet. I think we have our spring dates all figured out. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, yeah, I definitely want to come. I, it's been a while since I've gotten to see them well, live. So. Um, do like a show at Zanies in Nashville. Oh, or yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever, so. I love Zanies. Come see me first. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> I absolutely will. Definitely. Um, second question is if you could, um, oh, what had to end in your life, good or bad, that led you to where you are today? Well, um, with the pandemic, my corporate career ended hmm. and the open up, it opened up the opportunity for me to do this because if I were in like a corporate salaried benefits, nine to five, management job like I was aiming for and like I've had in the past, I would have gotten that call and been like, no, like I'm not going to change everything. Wow. This is perfect. And I wouldn't have done wow. this. I'm pretty sure I wouldn't have done this. So, and it was hard during COVID. I was kind of losing my identity a bit because I always had this corporate, I started working corporately before I even went to college. Wow. I was young and I was like 19 and I got my first corporate job. Hmm. And that's been like an identity thing that I've have this like really good resume and I've always been how I felt like a little bit ahead of the game corporately. And then when that stopped and I chose not to go back to it, I didn't want to deal with like having to wear a mask all the time. Right. Cause I already deal with skin issues and I was like, I don't want to deal with that. So I just thought like, I'll just work remotely. I'll work. I was like nannying. I was doing other things. I just prefer to just keep it more close to home, smaller circles. Sure. And yeah, I was like putting it off, but also I was interviewing and getting kind of close to being hired and then things were falling through. And it was I was trying to just like tell myself it's OK, but I didn't understand because I used to get hired really easily. And I was mm. 
running into roadblocks with that. But it all worked out because once I got this, I was like, oh, okay. So that's why. That's why that was all happening. That's awesome. Yeah, the universe. Mm -hmm. I do. I strongly believe in that. So I was telling myself, like, it's something else is coming. Hmm. It's going to be like this forever. And nice. it disappeared. So. And I hope you don't take this the wrong way, but you don't give off a corporate vibe. So, like, <laughs> I'm, I was stunned when you said that you, like, that's what you did and you'd probably be comfortable continuing that because i think just seeing you i mean again i just don't know you from your instagram and like watching the gaelic storm yeah. videos and stuff but it you don't strike me as uh the desk cubicle office mm -hmm. you know type so my probably... jobs though were not like i didn't have to stay in a cube so i as office oh, that's cool. there, i was always going around i was doing errands and i was working with everyone in the office so i always have been pretty active in my corporate jobs and also super into like communication. That's always been like high up in my, uh, the role that I played at work. Sweet. Mm -hmm. uh, that makes sense then. Um, all right. And last question ties into the show. It's kind of goofy question, but, um, if it was a genuine dystopia and you had your choice between aliens or zombies or a comet heading toward earth or climate change, whatever it is, everybody knows it's their last day. How would you spend it? What would be your epic death? Oh, uh, I'm not sure. I feel like I would maybe. Freak. I feel like it's got to have something to do with kilts and men with hairy chest. Oh. Like if they're not, if they're not thrown into that last day on earth bit. Yeah. Um, I guess there would be a couple people I'd want to be really close with. So it'd be mm. Jay. It'd be my dear friend Elena. I'm not really into like huge amounts of people although i play in front of like lots of people but if i'm socializing i prefer smaller groups so i right. probably would just want like a few people so that we could kind of be there together, and it would have to be really meaningful and we'd also just like splurge on like yeah. most food and some alcohol and i would want to get a really good massage a really good scalp massage that would be nice but i wouldn't like go shopping or anything because what would be the point i would just want to eat and like yeah, I get a good massage and drink and listen to some of our favorite music probably one last time. Nice. But so we, we have an artist that draws everybody's last, whatever the question is at the end, we have an artist that draws everybody's whatever they're going to want to be doing. I'm going to be but, like <laughs> getting a massage in the photo. I'm, I'm literally thinking of you're just going to chair. A hairy chest and, <laughs> and there's a hairy chested Celted man giving you a head massage. You've got some alcohol, some great food, a little record player. Somebody feeding her grapes. My friends watching. <laughs> yep, yep, with your friends just kind of watching. Like, she's living it up. Look at her. Which Jay's going to be watching some man. <laughs> yeah, he's like, awful. why is this random dude giving my girl? This is fucked up. And it's going to be like, yeah, this is what I said I would want my last day to be. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. He's like, God, man. Uh, I, would it, what would it be? How would you? How would it be ending? Would it be a comet? Sorry, what? <laughs> how, would it, how would it be ending? Would, it, would you want a like comet, climate change, aliens? What are you thinking? I know, because like climate change would be too drawn out. I would think, <laughs> <laughs> right? Right. We all wake up tomorrow when it's like an ice age and half of like Florida is gone and shit. Not that that would be a bad like a thing. Slow die off. I think a comet. Nice. Love Aliens, it. Aliens, what are they going to do? Eat me? Like, I don't want that. I would want just like, I want to see something really cool come out of the sky. Don't tempt them. You know? Yeah. That'd be cool. Glad you gave me that option because I think that's what I would go with. I like to give people the option of how they're going to die. I mean, we might have like um, Yellowstone might erupt any day, right? That is, yeah, there's a lot of shit that there you go. It, it's really weird. If depending on the day and, and how bleak the news wants us to make us all feel, they just start throwing shit out there where they're like, yeah, there's a comet and there's also fucking Yellowstone and also climate change and also COVID and also Ebola. And you're just like, and also nuclear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that too. And also, yeah, the onset of nuclear war, you know. Natalia's like, I finally get to the West Coast and Yellowstone's got to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she just sees it from outside the window of the plane and they're just slowly turning back. They're like, and we're just going to loop around. <laughs> um, that's awesome. Well, listen, I am had a blast. I'm glad you decided to come on, uh, even though you forgot. Um, <laughs> and uh, I hope you had a good time. I did. I said, I think I was... I said at the same time other people were talking, but when we got to the point of like the picture of me being massaged and people, I was like, I knew there was going to be some 
train wreck moment. It's not, it's like super funny, but I was just new. Like I get myself in these scenarios where suddenly we're working with a really interesting picture. <laughs> My mouth runs in interesting ways. So we did, this was a very typical Natalia moment for us to go there. <laughs> nice. I, I'm glad we got to have a couple of those, I think, in this episode. Yeah. So it was pretty sweet. Thank you Perfect. so much. First yeah, thanks so much for doing it. Yeah, so thank you for becoming a new friend. We're excited. Yeah. We're looking forward to meeting you in real life. We'll definitely meet either at a show or one of your shows. It'd be really great. Awesome. Looking forward yeah. to it. Yep. Thank you so much. Take care. Peace. Bye. Bye. Dystopia tonight.